Our project is blind source separation, which involves taking a mixture of two signals and separating them without any knowledge of the original sources or how they're mixed. The following is an example of how we tested our system. <laughs> Look at that recording. This is the first step. You record things and it's great. Yay. So, it is a very, very nice day outside. It's, the sky is blue, it's really sunny out, I really want to be out in the grass and having fun. It's almost like summer has started or something. This is really, really awesome. My favorite animal is lions. They're awesome because they have those huge manes and they're really fluffy and they're like giant kitty cats and they're so cool. They're like awesome. The most awesome animal ever. Definitely. So, it is a very, very they're nice awesome because they have those huge the manes and they're really blue, fluffy really and they're really like giant. And running, running. <laughs> It is a very, very nice day outside. It's, the sky is blue. It's really sunny out. Some of those lions. They're awesome because they have those huge manes and they're really fluffy and they're really giant. Alright, so from this graph we have a comparison of the original signals, the mixtures, and the outputs. The upper signal would be like my voice and the lower one was Melissa's voice. Now, if you look at the mixtures, it's very obvious that in the bottom mixture, my voice is a lot more prominent, while in the upper mixture, they're kind of even. It's important to note that the positions of each peak in the mixtures, comparative to the originals, hasn't actually changed. The only thing that we're changing is really like the magnitude of the amplitudes. So then we can look at the outputs. Now, the output that corresponds to each mixture more closely resembles whichever voice was more prominent in that mixture. So the bottom mixture, where my voice was more prominent, is where my voice was outputted, while the upper mixture, where Melissa's voice was more prominent, her voice was outputted. So if we look at this next graph, we have the original voices overlaid with the output voices. The upper graph is my voice, while the lower graph is Melissa's. Now, if you remember from the recording, there was a little bit of residue from my voice and Melissa's output. This can be represented here at the beginning where you see the output actually kind of peeking out over the original voice. This is due to the fact that my voice was actually at a large peak at this point. Probably I was talking about something exciting, while her voice is at a very low point. And this was probably due to the fact that she was at the end of her sentence or something along those lines. What happens here is that it thinks that part of my voice is part of hers because of the fact that there's just so much of my voice at this point and so little of hers. These occurrences occur throughout the signal at any point in which one of our voices is substantially louder than one of the other voices. Here you can see this as all of these low points in my voice where they seem a lot more red than blue. Another thing to note here is that there seems to be a lot of noise at, of the output at these low points. This noise is also due to background ambient noise. Now we can't get a fully silent background just because of the nature of our campus and the fact that our microphones aren't so great. So this causes a lot of that background ooh noise that you could hear in the recordings. As you can see here, although there are these little problems with the output, for the most part, it's actually pretty accurate. Sometimes they're, they're pretty good. They're definitely my favorite. I used to like uh, color pencils. Our system worked for manually mixed sources, but when we tried to separate sources that were naturally mixed, i.e. two people speaking at the same time into separate microphones, that didn't come out quite as cleanly. That's because the algorithm that we used doesn't account for the time delay that's present in real-world microphones between the two mixes. This time delay is prominent enough to require separate algorithms, especially if the two sources are moving, as they would be in a more real-world scenario. Thank you. Anytime. Thank you. You're done. <laughs>